say to Jim Sheridan, who seemed to think he'd like to go again. So Jim Sheridan, who is a Scottish uh, Member of Parliament and has been a long-standing friend of Cyprus. Thanks, Peter, and, and, and again, thanks very much for all the invitation uh, to come along. I, I know that 1974 was a very serious year in terms of what happened in, in Cyprus, but when I saw a lighter note, Scottish people can have uh, a lot of sympathy for 1974 as well, because I think that was the last year that we qualified for the World Cup. Um, <laughs> uh, but certainly, for, for, since becoming involved in Cyprus, I'm very much the, the, uh, the young kid in the block, maybe not the age, but certainly in terms of the history of of Cyprus. In that short period of time, uh, I've made an awful lot of um, friendships, a really close friendship, and uh, been really uh, honoured in, in terms of meeting some of the people uh, that we've met. And I know there's an awful lot, but it's an awful lot of Scots who go to Cyprus and enjoy Cyprus, but I really don't think many of them don't understand the history um, of Cyprus. And I think that's a role that certainly politicians have um, to try and educate the people of the UK when they're visiting Cyprus. It's not just a beautiful island, but you can go into a Sintan. There, there is a history there, uh, and there is a horrible history there in terms of the, the occupation uh, by Turkey. And, and, and just on the question of Turkey, I have to part company with Chris. That, uh, um, I, I, I just don't agree, for various reasons, Turkey joining the European Union. And I don't accept the argument simply because they are a big country, they are a big economy. That they can then ignore the, some of the atrocities uh, that's taking place and indeed the occupation. And if they wish to come in and join the Club of Europe, then they have to meet the criteria and you have to agree the criteria and you have to that. <laughs> but one of, the, one of the most profound things that you, that you see when you, when, certainly when you go to Cyprus and Famagusta is the look in people's faces when they, you can see their houses and the houses are occupied. Um, by Turkish people on the, some occasions, British people as well. And it must be, you can only try and get a feel, get an understanding for how that would feel if I was to stand in my place, my constituency, look at my house and see other people living in there. And I can just, I can only guess that the horror that that must, that must fill with people. But the other thing as well is the, when we talk to the, the relatives of those who have been killed and the annual sort of get together uh, in, in, in Cyprus to try and remember the loved ones of the people who died um, during the occupation, young men and women who have never ever uh, be seen again and to try and make sure that we can draw some sort of line in the sand under us and, and get permission to try and find out where they are, where they have been buried and try and uh, resume some of, the, uh, some of the bodies and find out just exactly where they are and, and try and draw a line in the sand and I know that's extremely, extremely um, difficult. But also as well how the, the churches and the places of prayer in Cyprus have been vandalised and in many ways damaged. And I think it's right and responsible to look at the European Union to get resources in order that the churches can be repaired and replenished and whatever else it takes to make sure that those churches in Cyprus are kept in the standard that they should be kept. So as I say, I'm, I'm relatively new to the Cyprus group, but every time uh, I go there, I, I get a, a better feeling for what's going on. One thing about MPs is there are demands from many countries, many uh, organisations, uh, but I certainly look forward um, to working again with the Cyprus groups. And, and, and just last year, I can well understand the frustrations that were fed to myself and the former MP Tony Wright when we were told in no uncertain terms that uh, you come over here, you enjoy our hospitality, <coughs> but you don't deliver anything in return, and I can understand the frustrations. But that doesn't diminish our role, our determination, to try and get some sort of peaceful settlement in order that we can get a free and independent Cyprus. Thank you very much, Jim Sheridan. I would now like to move on to Matthew Offer, Member of Parliament for England. Well, good evening everyone, and uh, thank you Peter for the introduction. So, uh, certainly some faces are known to me, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for those that are coming here today, and I'd like to say you know, hello to all of those as well, and also hello to the new people who I don't know. Um, as Peter said, I'm the newly elected Member of Parliament for Hendon. I have been to Cyprus on several occasions, um, particularly when commemorating the missing, and I've been on part of the trips. And one thing, or two things that really strike me, the first thing is 
that we have not resolved this issue, and it has to be resolved. And that has led me to come away from many of the visits and also the meetings we've had in Trafalgar Square quite angry that there hasn't been any action by all governments for the last 30 odd years or so. And it's about time we need some action to take place. Now, William, William Hay came to visit uh, our constituencies of Finchley and Golders Green, Chip and Barnet, and Hendon leading up to the general election at the Brotherhood Centre. I think it was made very clear to him that people wanted some action and we wanted something done. And I believe he certainly took that message away. And I was very pleased when the coalition manifesto was published and David and I sat in the House of Commons and we saw, it was there in black and white, that a resolution was needed and this was something that the coalition government was going to work towards. And I was very pleased when David reiterated that point with the House of Commons and also with the Foreign Secretary. So we do want to see some action rather than plaudits from politicians and that's something I feel very strongly on. I may steal David's thunder a little bit tonight, but I'm very pleased that he is now going to re-establish the all-parliamentary uh, group on, on Cyprus, meaning that we can start working towards some of the issues that many of us want resolving as part of the Cyprus problems. It's unacceptable that Turkey does not allow uh, ships uh, and other vessels from the island to use its docks. Under maritime law, that's something I find very difficult to accept. And also, I think it's some kind of double standards when considering the recent uh, flotilla that went to Israel and the comments that have been made by Turkey towards Israel. Secondly, uh, visiting the islands, I have seen the changes in the ease of being able to cross the border uh, and Nicosia. But I would like to see that across the whole of the island. And I think one of the worst images, and I, I've seen it again tonight, is that image of the barbed wire fence as it crosses the beach. Um, in Farmer Gusta, I believe it is. And I think, again, that is unacceptable. And finally, Jim's already mentioned it, it's the looting of the relics. Many of you know the work of Doris and his uh, campaign to document what has gone on for the last 30 years. This looting is simply unacceptable within our society and within our, our world nowadays, and we certainly need to, to look upon that. One of the things I believe, and I may be speaking out of turn here with my colleagues, is I believe that America has a strong role to play in this. America has a strong influence, and we tend not to speak about that too much, and that's certainly something that I would be pushing William Hague upon and pushing his counterpart in the Obama administration, the influence that they can bear upon Turkey to play their part and also to accept that we need uh, a resolution to this problem. It's also been mentioned about Turkey's accession to the EU. I do support that, but I have some conditions, and many of them not only uh, also refer to the mainland, but they refer particularly to the island of Cyprus. First of all, we can't have a divided island. It's simply not acceptable if they want to join the EU for that to occur. We have to have a solution that is acceptable to all islanders and not a minority. Secondly, land and property have to be returned. It must go back to the people who it was taken from over 30 years ago, and that is not up for discussion or negotiation. And finally, we also want the missing to be located and identified so people can start the grieving process and get past a terrible period of history of the island. And for me, until those three issues are resolved, I am not prepared to accept Turkey as a member of the European Union. They, for me, are the red lines that I certainly want to see in any agreement. So, in my time in Parliament, these are certainly issues that I'm very keen to pursue. And I know that some of my other colleagues are, as I mentioned, David's already started work upon that. And I certainly intend to support and work him on that. And I look forward to working with you. But as Theresa said as well, I look forward to working with you, not for a long time. And I look forward to being with you in Cyprus, rather than standing for you here in Parliament. So thank you.